Welcome, fellow producing experts. We are on producing class 104, which means you're like in graduate school by now. You know everything you need to know. So tonight, we've decided to do two things. We're going to talk about gossip. That's going to be a good. We're going to talk about mm. today's gossip. Mm. And then we're going to bring on someone who we are totally fangirling about. Right? right. Yeah, absolutely. But who are you? <laughs> who oh, are you anyway? Hi, guys. I'm Sue Gilad. Um, I am, when there's a Broadway, I am a producer and a huge advocate for and champion of the Broadway. And my shows on hiatus are Moulin Rouge and Jagged Little Pill and Company on Broadway. And Larry conveniently has exactly the same credits because he wanted to make this a very efficient webinar tonight. Yes. So that's me, Larry Brogowski. Um, and we've been doing these now for a little while while we're all still homebound. Um, so I hope you guys are all somewhere comfortable and lovely and warm uh, with people that you love. And we're gonna. And if you're not, you're here with us, so it even yeah. better. We're gonna talk about creating in quarantine. So if, even if you're none of those things, we're gonna talk about like tapping into your creative potential and your genius. And I know that so many of the writers that we've been talking to are so happy in quarantine because they get to hibernate as writers normally do, and they don't miss a thing. So here's your opportunity to create in quarantine. But before we talk about that, let's talk about today's new news, that Frozen is going to be officially on ice. So- uh, That the was the Disney... actual headline. Actually, oh, seriously? Frozen on ice. So Disney Theatricals yeah. announced today that they will not be bringing back Frozen. Here's why I think this is interesting. Disney Theatricals is a drop in the bucket of the empire of the mouse. And so I feel that Disney has a unique perspective, economically speaking, in that they're going to be looking at their spreadsheets and saying, is it smarter for us looking at a three month, a nine month, an 18 month, or some people are saying a three year um, projection about when Broadway will come back? And is it better to just roll up our icy carpet? Mm, see what you did there? Put it all in storage, not have to expand, not have to, um, spend to keep a show theoretically open and then maybe say okay frozen had its beautiful run because it is a beautiful show and open another show or announce once broadway is free clear and vaccinated frozen's coming back so the important thing here for from my perspective is that when disney says we're closing up shop you know that they're looking at a bigger picture than just the street of broadway they're looking at worldwide effects they're looking from a, a more forward thinking perspective than an individual Broadway producer or even an individual theater owning family can look at because they do have a global perspective. They have numbers on who's gonna be traveling and when they're gonna be traveling and what New York will look like if and when we open up again. So here's what that says to me. It says that it is perfect time to talk about creating in quarantine because we suspect based on today's news that we're going to be missing Broadway mm. for a little while longer than everyone is anticipating up till now. So we have time, guys, and that's the thing, something that we usually never have, right? We have this sort of luxury of extra time on our hands to really get creative and use this time. But also I think, you know, be gentle on yourselves. If you haven't created anything yet, it's okay. Other than chaos and, then, and well, ajita. <laughs> yes, which means yeah. yeah. ajita. Um, but, but really let's sort of dig in and use this time now to, to do the things that we always said we wanted to do, right? Um, we're actually doing that right now. We, we're, we're producing a film and, um, we're actually doing a, a Zoom table read of this film. That's how we're using this time, getting creative on projects that have been sitting for a while. And now we're like, well, let's actually do it and make it happen. So it's beyond exciting. We put an incredible cast together and is actually, oh. Someone from our cast is actually joining us tonight. Eureka! But it is a, it's a good opportunity for everyone, including us. We learned the lesson that we were talking about on Producing 103, which is if you have a hero or someone who you really admire or someone who you feel a kinship with, now is a perfect time to reach out, not like a crazy person, on social media and just let them know, I admire you. Follow them. You can even send a DM. I, I would safely say this is a unique moment in history that you will have the likeliest chances of someone responding to you because they're not on honeymoon and they're not on a film set. At least, I hope mm -hmm. not. So I talked to Brad Pitt earlier. No, <laughs> I didn't. That's not true. That's not true. But maybe tomorrow, actually. It was Dr. Fauci. He just Why looked not? like yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a great honor tonight of bringing on someone who knows how to create outside of quarantine to speak to you about her entire journey of creating one of the most beautiful and iconic pieces of 
theater on film that I've ever seen, and it's the entire series of submissions only. And if you missed it the first time around, uh, which we did, you were able to catch it just a couple of weeks ago, and maybe Kate will have some insider info about how to catch it if you haven't caught it yet. I, but I feel I like- binge it. I like just flew through yeah, all three seasons like crazy, and I was like, "Oh my god, there's them, and there's the, oh, and there's." We knew everybody on it. It was just yeah. like a who's who of you know theater and and beyond. It was just, it's just super super fun. But I do want to say before we um, bring Kate on, which we're going to do in a minute, because let's face it, that's why you're all here tonight. I mean, yeah, I'm we're here. all right, but uh, Kate, something. Um, <laughs> You guys can ask questions. So down at your screen, you can see a little, um, there's a hand raising thing, there's a chat. So feel free to ask questions. We're, we'll address as many of them as possible. I, we already got some questions even before this, um, this webinar went live tonight. So um, ask away guys, go crazy with it. So, so like yes, she's so good looking. I really like her. Okay, hang on a second, let's see. We don't know how to do this, guys, ah. so let's bring on Kate, but maybe we'll bring on Noah, too. I mean, there she is, right? <laughs> let's... All right, make... All right, you guys. This is this why is... we work in theater, everybody. Film is a very big mystery to us. Wait, hang on, I want to get... Oh, we have faith in you. Chat. Thank you. Make... Yeah, of course you do. Make Come on. Take her a co-host and see what happens. No, she's already a co-host. Hang on a second. Yeah. Hang on. All right, make her a co-host. She's co going to really appear in a second. <laughs> um... Hey, Kate, turn yeah. on your... um. Oh, there it is. Turn, ah. on, turn on your heart light. Yay! Turn Yay, on your heart you light. How appropriate. Neil Diamond. Hi. 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 Okay, hey, gonna... Weatherhead. Hi, hi. Kate, is it okay if we introduce you um, appropriately? As, as opposed to inappropriately? Well, you know, I, most to. of what we do is inappropriate, but today we're going to be appropriate. So we have to tell you all how Larry and I got to meet Kate Weatherhead. First of all, she oh. was just a legend in our, our we had heard Wait, about she doesn't her. even know this. I don't know if you, you know don't this. know this. So we, we knew of you, right? And then we were doing a table read for our, our show, The Other Josh Cohen, and the writers, who are also the stars, who are Broadway yummy human being said, listen guys, we're just doing a table read, but trust us, you wanna bring in our friend Kate Weatherhead, trust. Okay, so the cast was six people up till then. And then we do a table read, we rented, I think, Ripley Greer and Kate comes and she's very like unassuming, very easy, sits down quietly, minds her own business, and then proceeds to knock it out of the park with, I don't know, the seven or eight or nine or 16 characters that she read. I mean, like every one of them, I was like, Oh, she's that person. Oh no, she's that person. So at the end of the reading, we're all you left, Kate, and we're all sitting around. And I said, Our GMs are going to hate us. We have to have seven people in this show. I cannot there was no do question. this. We cannot <laughs> do this show without this woman. And she's going to be an amazing Neil Diamond. So, but imagine how happy Larry and I were when fast forward a year and a half or two years later, when we saw submissions only a few weeks ago, and we said, thank goodness, we didn't know who you were. Otherwise, we would have like super fangirled out in the creepiest way. And you would have been like, and those producers are crazy. <laughs> so we didn't actually know what a big deal you were, but now we do. You guys, I hope you all got a chance to see the other Josh Cohen and see Kate as Neil Diamond. That is just a performance for the ages, <laughs> really. And everyone else. Yeah. She played everyone. <laughs> Well, we have spoken enough. Let's hear from Kate a little bit, shall we? Yes. So, Kate, there you are in your, what do we call it, your, your quarantine corner? Your quarantine corner? Yeah, we were, we were workshopping this new word uh, before it started, and I think I was saying it's my quarantine corner, because it's where I, like, have my phone calls and do my Zoom calls, and then I think we came up with quarantur, which is just so melodious. <laughs> uh, quarantur, but that's where I am. Okay. <laughs> the X is silent, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. Well, you look um, proper and grown up. Oh, well, joke's on you. I, I don't know. Is it because I'm wearing a pink sweater in a pink chair? So it maybe feels intentional or something. Yeah. But I have basically like two things that I find to be acceptable clothing items for these types of things. So... I wear this pink sweater or there's like a yellow sweater. I have two two choices, basically. I'm glad we're getting the pink one. It's very I wonder, nice. I always wonder if it's more of a rose. She's talking about the sweater, but it, are people wearing pants? This is what, and you don't have to show us. I hope not. No, I'm wearing oh. pants. Oh, wow. I'm totally wearing pants. Oh. Kate, you yeah. dress up? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the fanciest. I'm also wearing earrings for the first time in about five weeks. <laughs> they look strangely like earbuds. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, they're little hoops. <laughs> 
Um, so I, I, I want to hear for myself about the genesis of Submissions Only, because just like Larry, you guys very generously put it on the television a few weeks back, and I just, dis my kids were like, I thought my mom was here, but yeah. no, I just went back to back until the thing was done, and initially I skipped through the sort of introductions to them, but then I went back and I watched the introductions to each of the, like, um, most impactful episodes, I guess, and um was blown away by you. I, I really appreciated that over time it started, it seemed like it started like fun idea. You're this incredibly prolific writer, you know, uh, you wanted to showcase your talents and then it turned into like a proper thing. It, it did kind of, it did. Um, I wasn't really a prolific writer uh, bef when we first started. That's the thing. I, um, when I was a kid, I, wrote a lot and I had this idea in my head as you know eight nine ten year old that I would become an actress and a writer that was like my plan and then as I got older went through high school like the writing really started to take a back seat it was it felt like a, a subject that I was good at in school but not not a passion so much and I definitely had my sights set on you know a professional acting career in New York City and that is what I moved uh, to New York to do. And um, it wasn't until I was in Legally Blonde. That was the, my, my second Broadway show. And so it felt like I had um, achieved the, the thing, you know, like I did it. I've, I, I made it to Broadway. And what was the first one? That was your second? The first one, I was, um, I was an understudy in the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Oh. And I went right from that show into Legally Blonde, um, which was an incredibly exciting and thrilling time. Um, but there was there was a moment during Legally Blonde, not not negative, but where I thought, oh, what an interesting place to be in when you have presumably achieved your life dream and you still have like a lot of life ahead of you. Uh, and that's sort of where the the writer curiosity began you know very subtly um and it, and nothing i didn't really do anything about it until cut to um 2010 i was in dallas texas doing it's a bird it's playing it's superman at the dallas theater center with andrew keenan bolger who we cannot talk about submissions only without talking about andrew keenan bolger right because he's the other half uh, of the whole enterprise. And so he was in the cast with me. I had worked with Celia, his sister in Spelling Bee. Um, and we became friends through doing the show together, you know, show friends. And he had just uh, recently won uh, an amateur filmmaking contest through, I want to say, Lonely Planet, and was awarded a camcorder mm -hmm. and final cut software and he was looking for excuses to you know play with his new toys so we did kind of like a silly little parody video just recreationally then he got asked by MTI to film like a behind the scenes at Superman and he uh we were friendly enough at that point and had sort of recognized a, a similar sense of humor that he was like I have to do this video and um, that I don't want it to just be people like signing in on the call board and here's the wardrobe department. Like I want it to be kind of fun and you seem like you have some fun ideas. Do you want to help me? And I was like very eager to, to help because I think even unbeknownst to Andrew at this time, I had started to um, become very agitated uh, as an actor working on new work. And while Superman wasn't brand new, it was an adaptation. And I found myself like very itchy and antsy on the sidelines, watching people collaborate and wanting to like offer my opinion. Basically, I was having a hard time staying in my lane. Um, <laughs> Can anybody relate to that? Anybody else that's listening tonight? I think right now, especially more than ever, people are like, yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and again, it was something that I was, 
not like I wasn't going to sleep at night thinking, you know, the, it's because I'm I should be creating my own thing. All, all I was thinking was like, I have ideas and I have no there's no platform for me to um, to offer them. And it's inappropriate. It's not my job. OK, so we do this. So anyway, all that is to say, I was very excited to help Andrew with his backstage video. And I was offering all these ideas, which he was on board with. Well, he sort of surprised me by uh, crediting me as a co-director of this video, mm -hmm. which is an important detail because my husband, whom you know, Jeff Kreuter, who's watching this from the kitchen, is a Tony Award-winning lighting designer. Uh, have to, had to plug you, baby. <laughs> and um, he was our lighting designer. So he was in Dallas with us for, for a good portion of the time. And I showed him the video and I said, look what Andrew did. He he, um, you know, put me as a co-director, isn't that nice? And he said, yeah, that is really nice, actually. Um, and not long after that, we were having a, con he and I were having a conversation about like, what am I gonna do when I get back to New York? Like the same story, my one show is ending, I don't have a job, what do I do? And it was Jeff who said, I'll tell you one thing, you should stay in touch with Andrew Keenan Bolter because he likes you and he knows how to get shit out there. And then he said, you two should do a web series together. And for anyone who, well, there, I know there are some people watching who know this story, but for anyone who doesn't know this, I really want to take you back to 2010 when no one was doing web series and no one was talking about web series. So it's very odd that that is the suggestion he made because it's not something we had ever really talked about. I think we talked, I think we'd watched one in our lives and hated it. So it was odd that he should say it. And yet it was perfect that he should say it because I instantly thought he's right. And I brought it up to Andrew the next day. He was like, that's weird. I was kind of thinking the same thing. And we had this brief conversation where he said, uh, well, do you have any ideas? And I said, no. And then I, I paused and I said, no, that's not true. I said, um, there's a relationship that I don't think has quite been depicted in the way that I experience it. And it's, it's my relationship with my gay friends. I said, uh, Will and Grace obviously is this iconic show, but that's actually, that does not represent sort of my friendships um, with my gay friends within this, within the theater community. So we started there and then, and then very quickly we're like, well, we have no money and no resources. So what's something, like what's a framing device for that kind of relationship that we could actually do with your camcorder and you know our friends? <laughs> and we thought, well, we have access to our apartments and we have access to rehearsal studios because we can pay for those by the hour. And we thought, well, it can't, they can't be in rehearsal for anything because eventually that's going to have to be in a theater and we can't afford a theater. So we're like, what, <laughs> what exclusively happens in these studios? What's the thing that never leaves these kinds of rooms? And we were like, well, auditions. So that's what we, that's where we started. And we were having this conversation. I think we were both driving to the theater for a matinee and we had the, the central relationship figured out as we walked into the building and then throughout the matinee kept finding each other in the wings and like fleshing out the rest of the story being like and uh, the casting director has a has a bitchy assistant and and she's got like a really cool sassy friend and uh what what if what if her agent is actually the ex-boyfriend of the cast you know like we figured out these relationships which then you know really defined the entire series we figured those out during a matinee of superman we are very grateful to superman but i am where, too that's where some of the best stuff happens so it's funny that that story i mean like you meet your your best buddies when you're doing and not that that was bad theater because it was probably actually very good theater but you meet people doing like the oddest shows i think about how sue met your buddy and my buddy steve rosen who by the way is commenting here that he thinks you're the most talented person on the planet 
Um, he's Honestly, watching. Hi, good. Steve. <laughs> but you know, they they met doing summer stock, and it's like the relationships that get forged. It was very good from, summer stock. Yeah, well, I'm there sure. are no recordings of it, so I will tell you, it was very good. <laughs> it was the best. Yes. But like, how many years ago was that? And and three hundred. Three at least three hundred years ago. Yeah. And you know, we end up producing Steve's show that he created with you in it. it. It that's that always blows my mind. Like you don't think you don't think about that when you're like doing you know Superman in a regional theater somewhere. Well, I certainly wasn't think. Well, I'll also tell you this, and just in case there's anyone watching who's in any. Well, we're all kind of in a period of despair, but but pandemic aside, if anyone is in a in a period of either transition or thinking or like having an identity crisis within the business, I will have you know that in the airport, bef like the day I was going to fly to Dallas, I was weeping in a corner of LaGuardia, like really awkwardly crouched down on the phone with my mom saying, I don't want to do this. And that's because the job I had had a few months before, an acting job, was on something that I was convinced was going to be like my ticket to the rest of my theatrical life. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. Uh, and like the phone didn't ring and the auditions weren't coming and doing Superman while it ended up being a great experience. I had, um, the narrative I was telling myself was like, you failed, you're playing a glorified ensemble member and it's regional theater. You know, like I, I had made these decisions about why it was a backwards move. And yet it was absolutely the doorway to the next chapter of my career. I mean, I, I look at my career now and I go like 2010 was the, the fulcrum, like it completely changed after that experience. Like everything I've done since can be traced directly to that experience. You hear so, that with almost everyone who has success in their career, mm -hmm. that just at the moment that your whole being wants to say no, you must say yes. Oh my gosh, Liza Minnelli sings a song about that from 70 <laughs> Girls 70. <laughs> that is so obscure. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, wow. <laughs> 2010, you're lucky because 2008, 2009 was tough for everyone. Some people are are comparing this time to that time, at, at the very least from a fiscal perspective, right? That you mm -hmm. thought you built up this uh, entire nest egg and protecting yourself and now, whoa, everything is decimated. I mean, in our theater industry, I think Broadway is gonna be one of the last things to return because if you, you know, if you want a prescription for Corona, pretty much the theater provides it for you, I think. Um, but across every industry in the last eight weeks, just completely wiped out. So mm -hmm. apropos you, general feeling of despair, what do you do? What do you do when you find yourself crouched in a corner of LaGuardia or eight weeks into quarantina? Um, well, I'd say it's a, it's a mix of things. Um, I'll sort of, uh, well, I'll, I'll sort of carve it up, but we'll, we'll spend most of the time talking about the, the creative aspect of it since that's, that's the thrust of, of this webinar. But, um, I certainly, um, have found great solace in the, um, in the allowance, you know, allowing yourself to feel whatever you feel at any given time and, and trying not to like judge uh, the amount of activity or inactivity. Um, th that being said though, both Jeff and I seem, the days seem to go by fast, which weirds us out. Um, but you know, making sure, <laughs> making sure to like eat well and keep moving and really connecting with the people that we care about is like top top of our list of priorities. Mm -hmm. um, doing our best to to share this time with others, even though we can't be in close proximity. So there's that. Um, and then creatively, um, I'm I'm lucky in that I. Uh, started this whole thing with with some projects that I was able to continue working on uh, on my own. Um, some one thing I can't really talk about, but it's exciting and it's a thing. I know. Sorry, everybody, but I can't talk about it. But but it, it's you know, it's it allows me to, to breathe a little bit easier through this. 
Um, the other thing um, is that I have, we all have time actually to um, read each other's stuff, um, which I find then just helps my own writing. So um, it's been nice to uh, read other people's plays, other people's pilots. Um, Colin Hanlon, if you're watching, I, I have to read yours. I know, I know. <laughs> Do you want us to right now, Kate? <laughs> we'll We've wait. I'll just, give me a minute. No. Um, uh, so, you know, just, just staying creatively connected to people and, and uh, like just being able to use your brain in that way. Obviously I'm still an actor, so I've done like some readings online. Um, but um, I will say, so, uh, back to submissions only the the release of all three seasons that weekend and and um, mm. because they were available for free for forty eight hours also um, provided an opportunity for those of us who made it to to revisit it as well because it's not like I was you know I hadn't watched it in a very long time um, and it was it was sort of the first time I was able to like enjoy it as an audience member um just because so much time had passed and uh i i had forgotten things about it and so it was i i was able to genuinely enjoy it without um sort of watching it through the lens of like right we sound edited that out to do you know right we chose that musical sting over that musical thing you know it was it used to be such a clinical experience watching the show and this time i was able to just enjoy it and it has um recharged my submissions only batteries so andrew and i uh have been talking quite i know i'm this is not an official announcement it's not because we're in the formative <laughs> stages but uh, go first, folks yeah i know x3 x3 um <laughs> uh, but but i i am i am proud to be able to say that because um, it was so much work and um, it uh, so I've been very gun shy for the past however many years um, when people have asked whether we would ever do it again because all I can see is the the Herculean effort that is required and what's weirdly refreshing right now given given the what feel like insurmountable odds is that I, for whatever reason, and maybe I'm completely insane, is I actually, for the first time, see a way forward for submissions only that I have not. Um, and I feel like there's a new and very urgent story to tell through it because the show is always about um, tr like trying to get invited to the party. And now we've all been kicked out of our own party. <laughs> uh, so I just think there's a really interesting way back in to explore this like new world we're all going to be in where something that uh, uh, an industry that was already impossible to begin with, certainly for actors, is just going to be made extra impossible, but, but with its own new set of rules. And like, I just think there's a lot to explore below right now so my brain has been going uh a mile a minute about that these days um and and actively trying to figure out a way a way to make it happen wow okay we're in yeah so, larry's very good <laughs> at cameos we're in oh nice yes <laughs> um, you're very popular so there are There's people who have specific questions urgent all caps kinds of questions <laughs> For you, oh Sorry, do you do you actually want? Yeah, to I have a few. Yeah, yeah I have a few one. right here. So, wow, um, okay, popular. Um, so, what would you recommend for people who want to create projects like submissions only right now? I think we sort mm. of talked about that, but if you want to expound. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I would say work on getting your team together. Mm. Um, Good. I. The, the key to my success with Andrew was always um, accountability. Like once you 
say, let's do this, and there's expectation on both sides, um, it, I feel like it just increases your chance of actual productivity 100% because you have to face someone else, be like, yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> Um, you just explained so, our entire relationship yeah. in one. Yeah, but I'm terrified so of her. Thing. It makes me do things. She scares me. Yeah, but it's. I think I do think it's it's healthy and it's kind of for me. It feels like the only way through this. Me saying this to you, just talking about submissions only. Now I go. Well, I said it on. I said it to Larry and Sue. I better keep going. Millions and, on millions of watchers. <laughs> well, yes. I, whether it's a million or whether it's ten, you know. Now I, I now feel a, an extra amount of responsibility, um, and so I think if you have either an idea or just the desire or both, say it out loud to to a few people whom you trust and and if you think they are in a position to help you even better you know are it, are are they a potential writing partner are they someone who's good technically are they someone who's good at raising money are they someone who just has a really big empty house that you could film something in you know whatever it is um it's you know like in princess bride when they're like what are our assets <laughs> when they you know like the holocaust cloak and the wheelbarrow or whatever like what are your assets um jeff and i were just talking about this the other day or maybe this morning because what is time anymore um <laughs> uh so because it's you know it's very daunting andrew and i say all the time if we had any idea like what we were actually getting ourselves into we never would have done it whatever so, get done yeah so, you know, don't easy. worry, don't worry at first about like distribution, you know, or um, like who's, what editing console should we use? Like who makes you laugh or who always takes your ideas and helps you improve them? You know, like start with the stuff that feels steady and inspiring. Um, and just start having conversations because at a certain point, either you'll run out of steam and you'll go, oh, that was, no, that's, that wasn't right. Or you'll go, well, do you want to just get together tomorrow and read this or, you know, get together on Zoom, whatever it is. You want to just, I don't know, you want to take a crack at this? At a certain point, you're, the, the rubber will meet the road, right? I think um, that's great so, advice and we've been, sort of on every webinar we've done so far, that's the running theme. It's who's your team? Who's your crew? Who are your cheerleaders? Because yeah. you know you don't want to be the lone wolf out there, which is tempting for people who are lone wolves. Like, but there's mm -hmm. it just never, you can never get so far. You know, you always yeah. get stopped because you have nowhere else to carry the torch. I always want to celebrate the things that I stink at and then go find the people who are effortlessly great at it and love doing it. And I have a huge list of things I stick at. No comment, no comments. I heard you were going to say something. Um, but you figure out so that you really round out your team so that you don't feel like there's anything missing. You don't feel like there's a gaping hole. And you feel like you can hand off the stuff that, oof, I don't want to. Do you have anything, Kate, that you're like, oof, I don't want to? Oh, I'm excellent at everything, so. <laughs> That's why we had No, I mean, I'm like, what don't I hand off? Like anything technical I have a full-blown panic attack um <laughs> the first like for example the first season Andrew and I did kind of do everything um but as soon as somebody else uh was available to schedule who yes. I was like please never make me schedule anything again <laughs> um uh oh I mean the list the list is endless but um all that is to say is, yeah, de delegation is a, a great <laughs> skill and just like, <laughs> amazing in general, just delegate. Um, you're still in, but also know when it's time for you to intervene. And, you know, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you are um, uh, disengaged from it. You know, again, Andrew and I are always tried as best we could to be aware of everything that was happening, but it, gave us great comfort knowing that tasks were being handled by other other members of our team okay all right so we have some more questions you ready for some more yes okay without a broadway resume 
or, or thousands of social media followers, how do I get people to take my project seriously? How do I get the right people to notice? Let, let's see, we, 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 you know, we could answer that, but I'd like to hear from you, Kate. You probably are in a better position to answer that because, um, you know, there's so much magic and, and timing involved in everything that we do. Um, yeah. What I will say is from the creative standpoint is, and I know this isn't directly answering the question, but I think it's still important to say that if you're trying to anticipate something that's going to get you noticed or and attention, if you're trying to figure out how to, how to fit some idea of what you think they want, I, I don't think that's going to serve you. So staying as true to your own, um, your own self and your, you know, your own point of view, uh, I think is key. Um, and then again, like using what you have uh, also extends to promotion. Um, we're all, um, we've all been steeped in this social media stuff a long time now and everyone has their own relationship with it. Um, mine is complicated <laughs> and uncomfortable. How, um, actually, how has it changed since this quarantine has happened? Like just the recent, you know, the couple of months, I think it's changed for everybody. Yeah. Like, we're oh, more gosh. on it, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say I, I don't easily, I don't want to, resort is not the right word, but it, do, it's, it doesn't feel um, like a natural thing to, to do. So I'm not, I'm not one to document my, my daily life or my daily observations. For me, it feels um, like a great place to post cute pictures of my dog and, um, oh, am I kidding? They're all cute. Uh, <laughs> or, or, or promote things that are like right here, like promoting this. Cool. This is happening. Here's a, here's a way to let people know. Um, but what I was going to say is that, um, again, like who, what is your network and, and don't be afraid to ask for their help. You know, I have dear friends. I do this with my friends. They do this with me with, those of us who have a, a particularly uncomfortable relationship with social media go, look, will you just do me a favor and will you repost this thing? And I go, of course, I know, I know this is killing you as it kills me every time I ask you to do it, but, but this it's an, you know, it's necessary, but I think you guys should answer the question as well, because I think you'd have a, a, a better perspective on it as people who discover what things. The question. <laughs> what was the question? What was the question? If you don't have a Broadway resume and you don't have a thousand, you know, like if you don't have a lot of followers, how can you get noticed in, in an industry? I, you know, I think the way that you nailed it, Kate, I just want to marry your two elements together. You said that magic and timing are a huge part of it. And then also following your own path and not being uh, not creating something out of a guess that perhaps will be successful, but being a reflection of who you are in the world. Those two things um, correlate really beautifully. If you are being who you're being and being authentic and putting your voice out there, then the magic and the timing are a million times more likely to happen. I can't tell you how many times I, people will say to us and we will look at other people until we really know them and say, oh, they were just lucky. And every time, without exception, luck is spelled W-O-R-K. You did all the work so that you could become lucky. Yeah. So I will invite anybody. Nobody starts with a billion followers. Nobody. Find your tribe. Find the people whose heart beat at the same level as yours. Find the people who they're excited by the same things that you're excited by. Now that there is an internet and social media and a million different niche groups, you truly can find your people no matter how crazy they are. Okay, I wanna tell you guys like a, a deep, dark secret of mine and it's super weird, but I wanna give you an example about social media. Since the 1980s, I have done the firm video workouts. They make me extremely happy. They're wearing ridiculous pastel colors. You are laughing at the leg warmers and they are so fantastic. A few months ago, I found a diehard firm user group on Facebook. 
These girls, and I'm guessing boys too, because I don't know them, are like my best friends in the world. They're so motivating. They put up pictures over the last 30 years from doing these workouts. Can I tell you guys how happy this makes me? in the most irrational way that there are other people who do these workouts that literally you have to dust them off and figure out your VCR to do them. Your people are out there, everybody. And then create with them, and then the magic and the timing and the wild success and the forthcoming Tony Award that somebody should give to Kate Weatherhead shows up. <laughs> I, we had I one. hadn't thought of that. I'm gonna go try and get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you can borrow your husband. I was going to say, borrow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, a, there's actually a really interesting question here. Kate, has wearing many hats in season one of Submissions Only given you a greater perspective on how to manage and assemble your team on other projects? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and I would say that's that is ongoing i mean we're as i said as andrew and i are talking about like all right are we going to try to do this again we're s still still learning from the first three seasons of you know if we ever do this again we need a fill in the blank it need we need this many weeks of production we need this many weeks of pre-production um so oh my gosh i mean the other thing about uh, submissions only is that we literally just learned as we went. So yes, we were wearing all the hats in season one, but we also were, we had interns holding clip lights. So what was that hat exactly? You know, it wasn't uh, the, <laughs> yes, we wore all of them, but there weren't that many because we, we were making our, like we just had fewer ingredients. Um, and then season two, we had more ingredients, so we needed more people to handle them. And then, you know, we, I'm just gonna run this metaphor into the ground. Uh, you know, this, we had this full banquet in season three. Um, and so it wasn't even so much that like by season three, I knew how to manage my team because my team looked c totally different from my team in season two. Um, but I also, uh, you know, one of the uh, many lessons I learned and I'm still learning was like how to be a boss. And I don't mean it in like the cool kids way, like a <laughs> boss. I mean like a boss, like someone in charge of the room. And um, you know, when you start a project that feels like a creative outlet for your friends, you don't, I wasn't seeing myself as like the person in charge. And by the third season, that was something I had to kind of get comfortable with or, or tr attempt to get comfortable with because I was still walking into the room and some of my closest friends were there, but I still had to know what to, t what to say and how to run the day and all of, all of the, how to get what I needed from them. And, uh, that yeah. You. How did that affect you going, you know, after that web series happened and you were the boss then going back to being hired for jobs as an actor, my experience of you was always throughout the other Josh Cohen, like consummate professional, very warm, but also like you, you did your work, you did it brilliantly, and you didn't bring a lot of drama off the stage. On stage, on you stage. You kept it on stage. Drama. So, well, yeah. I, again, there might be people out there who are like, give me a break, Weatherhead, but I, I want to believe that. Um, submissions only actually made me a better teammate because I started walking into rooms with a, a greater sense of what was going on in all the departments and my respect had grown exponentially um, just, just, th just through uh, experience and then this awareness of it. So um, realize just, learning how I could be the most useful in the room. And, and I don't know if Steve's still watching, but first of all, I 
I want to say, no, you're the most talented person. Um, but you know, Both I knew, I knew what Steve and David, I, I just, I under, I had a very deep understanding of what they were doing. Um, and so I, I had a sense of how I could help. Um, and a lot of the time that's, just kind of staying out of the way um, and, and, you know, being supportive when you can, but, um, you know, being a good listener, but, um, you know, pick your battles, pick the stuff that you think is actually important in the moment. Is this question best answered by the stage manager or the wardrobe person? You know, just sort of getting a sense of like, if I need something, who's the best person to go to and when? Is it at the beginning of the dinner break? Is it after? You know, I just, all that stuff from being on the other side um, kind of gave me a sense of the, the landscape, you know? Um, so I like to think that I'm, uh, I don't, I don't want to say a better actor because that's, that's totally different, but just like a better employee now. I think you said it right at the beginning, a better team, team, part of the team. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kate, now that, okay, this question has an ulterior motive and the ulterior <laughs> motive is we want to see more Kate Weatherhead and we want to hear more things written by Kate Weatherhead. So uh, in what way, if at all, has this expanded your possibilities for how you see your future and how you see yourself as a creative slasher artist, right? Actor, writer, producer, clip light holder. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> are we, we're talking about submissions only or, or quarantine? Well, you know, Larry and I are trying to get out of you. What do we expect from you next? Like, are we going to mm -hmm. see a season four? Everybody's hoping that's a yes. What else are you going to write that's going to be equally charming and hilarious and endearing and make you want to laugh and cry at the same moment? Right. Um, well, I... Again, I can't, I'm not, I'm not officially announcing anything, but it is my hope that we do see a season four, like my, my active hope. Um, you have a big house. Did you say you needed a house? Oh, I, that was, that was hypothetical, but sure. Yes. I mean, I'm not going to say no to a big house. So if you have a big In Florida, house, but it's a house. Yeah. Well, That's helpful. <laughs> We'll charter a, a, a bus um, <laughs> with seats six feet apart. Um, I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be sort of vague. I, yes, I will continue to write things. Um, I also started uh, directing um, in the last couple of years. Uh, <clears throat> specifically, uh, the youth company productions at Bucks County Playhouse the, the last two summers. And while I had directed submissions only, I had never directed anything, you know, of a theatrical nature. And once again, I was like, ooh, ooh, this is like really fun. This, this exercises muscles that I like to exercise. Um, so uh, I'm hoping there's more of that in the future. What's happening um, this summer? What? Is, What's, Buc is Bucks County happening this summer? Do we I have, don't think so, no. I don't, I don't think most so. most summer theaters, they're not. But maybe you can do it with yeah. them zoomily. I don't know, I'm not, sh I'm not sure. But all that is to say, um, I'm, I'm ha like, I'm excited to keep sort of folding that in. Um, and I just like collaborating. I just, I like, I like talking to people about how to make stuff, even if it's not mine. I just, um, it's very hard for me if someone says, hey, can I get your opinion about something to uh, not give it. And it's not, it doesn't even necessarily come from a place of like, because I'm right, or my idea is great. It's just, I, that's how I like to spend my time is like storytelling, problem solving. I really, uh, I, I, it feels recreational to me. It feels like we could do that. You know, I like if someone was like, do you want to go to the beach or do you want to like talk about act two of my play? And they're like, oh. 
we have we have more questions, but we do have a comment from your buddy Colin Hanlon. <laughs> he is okay. on here. He says it's okay to tell them I was your favorite scene partner on submissions only. It's honestly oh. fun. Just tell them. Oh, thank you for that permission. Yes, Colin, of course. We knew that. Of course, yes. Um, Don't tell Andrew. Do we um, have Kate? We oh, people are raising their hand. You guys just type instead. Of, well, we have them um, here. But hang on, oh. we're we gonna have guests. Okay, and Nathan, you too. You guys, look, I. <laughs> Wait, oh, yeah, so this, this was a bad idea to invite my, my submissions only castmates to this thing. Now we're just, it's all at war. <laughs> we are very big fans of Anne Nathan. We are not quiet about that. <laughs> but we would like to see your Tony Award winning guest star, Kate Weatherhead, if there's room on your chair. Dare oh. you, right? Can you, can you yes. speak to the chair Mr. with you? Mr. Weatherhead in? Oh, is Mr. Weatherhead? I, I saw him, he was quite slim, but you know, quarantine. Oh, I hear oh, footsteps. Yeah. It's happening. <laughs> but, okay, hold on. Wait one second. I have to take these out. One second. Okay. Disconnect. He's, he's a lighting guy and not a sound guy. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, there he is. Hey, Mr. Kreuter. <laughs> oh, to be cooking yeah. tea, oh, but so I was so healthy. captivated by this discussion that I haven't made anything yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeff Kreuter, we uh oh wait, no, no, you. it happened again. Hold on, wait, we can't hear you Nothing, again. Anything important? We hear you. We okay, but he hear does. in the meantime. You. No, we're here. We're back. Can how attractive they both are. Um, can you guys hear us? Yes. We it's so nice to see you guys. Every episode of Submissions Only, Jeff Kreuter got his name in the credits. Jeff, so will nice. you tell us the secrets behind? lighting submissions only and also that you were involved we suspect as more than just a tony award-winning lighting designer i didn't do very much lighting i did a little bit those clip lights that they had in season one i think i one day sold someone where <laughs> actually and and steve rosen was in that scene um batting flies away that was the very brilliant oh God, acting so teacher funny. scene we thoroughly enjoyed but but you did a lot more than that um, I help them out a lot um, to produce a, a behind the scenes and organization. And I was I was Kate Weatherhead's employee. I was her I was her number one employee. Rem remember when I said there were lots of things that I don't like doing? A lot of that. Yeah. I was like, yeah. you call them. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. There's How? a lot of people. Um, and How? I shot actually Andrew. So during season two, Andrew Keenan Bolger was in Newsies, starring in Newsies on Broadway, and did not have time to shoot every episode. So I actually shot a few in for him in his style. And then Andrew and, yeah. would, you should actually, I mean, he could, he could fill an hour easily. So if you keep doing this, he's, he's, yeah. he'd be a great guest because he, he's gone on to do like short films and he, and talk about a social media presence and he could talk you through that and te teach us all because he's like the king. Um, but Andrew would take the footage and edit it during act two of Newsies. When Crutchy was locked up. Because Crutchy's locked up in act two. And wow, that's a good, that's a good story. Good. Thank goodness for Crutchy. I used to, I was a proofreader when I was pursuing acting and we always used to joke that the dream role was Fontaine in Les Mis because sings the big number, goes upstairs for three hours, comes back, takes a bow, goes home. You could proofread like a good three books a night, easy. You're making me think we should have hired whoever was playing Fontaine at the time to edit any extra footage that Andrew couldn't get to. Well, next time. For next season time. four, for season yeah. four, it is not too late. All right, so how was it you two working and playing together? Uh, it was, it was, like each other? Yeah. You look very cozy. Oh, we still like each other. Okay. We were we actually had like a very in-depth conversation about this the other night and and reminisced about uh, how I would share my scripts with Jeff and share the footage and he always had really great notes and I would always get really pissy and defensive and then like half an hour later be like you were right I'll do, we'll do that not always I was right but often you were right <laughs> but I couldn't I can't just I can't just absorb the note. I have to be like, ah! and then, and then get over it. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the producers we worked with on season three um, 
thought that we were going to kill each other by the end of it without without knowing anything about what was happening. He, he, he predicted at the beginning that we wouldn't make it to the end, but we made it. He was wrong. He was wrong. So there. Oh, there. Yeah. They say the things that test a relationship is uh, massive amounts of time apart or massive amounts of time together. So I think well, that you two prepared very well for Quarantina by working on submissions only together. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. And I hope we get to do it again. Yeah. I'm feeling very confident. Okay, too. It's going to happen. Uh, but this, they asked you what you were working on. You are also writing a film with Andrew Kimbolger. Oh, my God. That I believe right. you are allowed to talk about. That's so true. One thing that she's allowed to talk about. It's been an ongoing, it's been an ongoing process. But yes, we have a, a screenplay that we've been revising and rewriting for a few years now. Um, about a theater camp. Has it been a few years? Yes, it's been a few they years. They were commissioned. Yeah. Is it called Camp? Because I liked that one. I know. That it's not. Uh, anyway, yes. Well, <laughs> again, given the, the current environment, it's hard to know what that timeline really looks like. But yes, we, we have that collaboration. And, really and, our, and our, our book series, too, Jack and Louisa. For ah. anyone listening who has um, uh, children in the 8 to 11 range, the Jack and Louisa series, um, oh, I'll say I, available online. So it's it not is too, right. It's uh, available online. But it's also, I love the books. I'm not 11 years old. I think it's a great book for anyone who loves theater to reconnect well, with why you started. Yeah. Are you reading them online, Kate? Because the other night, Daniel Radcliffe read Harry Potter to my children. I think they'd be more interested in Ooh. you. Well, here's uh, interesting. You should ask Sue because we actually recorded it for TheaterWorks USA, uh, which is a wonderful uh, children's theater company. Um, I don't know when it's being released, but it, it will serve as a fundraising event for that theater company. Okay. Um, Can you do one as Neil Diamond reading it? Absolutely, sure. I'll need like. Uh, like vocal surgery after well, reading it. Well, you put her yeah, on the payroll to do that. That's right. And yeah, how much, how much are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's going to cost me. We we had some more questions. Um, and I know we're like almost out of time. Should, should you we want him or is he is he dismissed? Well, no, we like him. You, stay, stay, stay. He's really good. Back. Hey, here, can, I need, I need to adjust. Uh, I'll stay. I'll stay like this. Kate, no. Kate and Jeff. Kate, Mister and Mrs. Weatherhead. No one's ever heard that before. Um, you have three minutes left. So, what would you like to share with America and the world? Oh my gosh. Oh, we have we don't have any big things like that. That's so much pressure. Um, we cooked bread, and it was well, good. We well, okay, we, has something. I, I do have sorry. I do have something. Is I do have something, and it's not a, a fully formed thought. But I, I think the more we can all start, and I'm sure people have started, but the the more we um, can innovate our content right now, uh, because I, I really do think we're looking at months and months uh, of uncertainty and certainly a, a lack of live entertainment. So yes, the priority is making sure the, the people at risk are taken care of um, and making sure our you know beloved institutions don't collapse. Um, but simultaneously, uh, I think, this is the time for us to get really, really creative. Um, and so uh, to the the individual with the question of like how to do this or whatever, like the first thing I should have said is don't, don't judge no bad ideas right now. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think there are any bad ideas right now. We're like, we gotta, we gotta come up with some stuff. So um, don't, don't judge yourself. Don't um, second guess yourself. We have the time. We have the, a sense of urgency. Um, and I just don't, I don't think there's going to be a lot of like ideas being shut down right now. Cause we, we got to figure this out. That's my that's my statement. My my closing argument. That's Great. kind of an amazing closing argument. It wasn't even an argument. No, it was it's an amazing closing statement. Argument. Thank really you right. for that. Um, yeah. we got we could talk for hours with these guys. Yeah, one more question. Someone two. else. Someone else must have a really good question. No, there there's, there's actually so many, many good questions. questions. We should I, send them to you for part two. 
Um, I think what we should do is, because we do have, wait, it's, it's just about eight o'clock. Let's, oh, yeah. so, okay, so we, we have our, our social media sites, uh, our, 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 on social media, our channel is Broadway Custom. So if you're not already following us, follow us there. This will be archived there. So this is all recorded. Mm -hmm. It'll be slightly edited, but put up there as well. So if you want to review this or, you know, if your friends weren't able to get on tonight, have them watch. And um, we, we will get to some of these questions offline. Great. Fantastic. How's that sound, people? We're so right. happy to see Radiant You too. We love yeah. and miss you. Miss and love nice you, you as well. I hope we see you in person really, really soon. Yeah. So. This was fun. Thank you for asking. Okay, guys. Stay healthy, stay safe. You too. Bye, Tony, we'll Awi you. Uh, Tony Award winners, past and future. Yes! Future. <laughs> yes. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night.